But Sam Bankman Freed, right, all over where extradited back to, to the US. Now we're realizing that uh, the co founder, Gary Wang, um, and Caroline Ellison, who looks like she's six years old. I don't know if you saw a picture of her. Have you seen a picture of her? Yeah, she, she looks. She looks like she's ten. Right? Yeah, they all she, do. She, she looks. I mean, like she, she looks very young. You're right. Yeah, really, she like, looks like very young. 10. Not that that matters or anything, but I'll get to that in, in a second. But uh, they're rolling over, right? And, and that's that's normal. Uh, so now, SBF is, is. I I I don't understand with a guy worth that much and hiding that much money because he knew this was coming and you saw it like just to sell out of some of these things. Um, I don't know who his advisors were, who his lawyers are, but you have to be careful when you're speaking. It's the number one thing they say, no matter what, just ask for a lawyer. If you get it, no matter what, ask for Don't say anything. It's 100% against you. If you go in and they start talking to you and you talk, don't ever talk. Even if you're innocent, just say, I want a lawyer. Because no matter what you say, that's on record and they can use that against you. And for this guy to go everywhere and make it appear like, hey, you know, I didn't do it. Now they have the smoking gun, right? So now they had it. Which is why, you know, they finally arrested him. But you know, now you have Wang and Ellison who who are basically working with the Fed. And I think the agreement was um, $250,000 in bail, which they probably reached in their pocket in their hand and said, hey, go, we're out, you know, before they even finish that, that the sentence. Uh, and they are able to basically go home for now, right? So – uh, they're rolling over, and you're gonna see this really influence, uh, you know, the case. And you know, for me, it, it's a story. It's it's always on there, and, and t- it's no surprise that they're rolling over. The surprise to me is when you really see the age of these people, Daniel. <laughs> I mean, Sam Bankman is 30. Uh, Wang's co-founder, Gary Wang, is 29, and Ellison. When I said she looked like you know six to ten and stuff like that, she's 28 years old. These are children. These are children running multi-billion dollar operations. These are children. Children. I don't know about These that. These are children. Right? They're These young children. people. In a scheme children. of things, at a billion dollar company, and, and when you're saying that these three are at the top, and you can say, well, if you look at, you know, Zuckerberg was Zuckerberg. Oh, you know, just they always surrounded themselves by people who were smarter than them. I felt like these guys felt like they were the smartest people in the room, and to do what they did, the ego that's involved, and I've seen it through Wall Street when you see. Anyone under 30, 35, when they start making money, they change. They are a god. They're more important than the world. And it's the way you're supposed to be because you're young, right? You're young. You don't know. You haven't got your ass kicked. A lot of these people haven't gotten their ass kicked yet. And, and just holy cow. I, when I see the ages of them and, and <laughs> it's just – uh, I don't know. It, I'm going to. So what? Something. Should they go light on them because they're young? No, not okay. at all. Okay, I want to make I'm not sure saying they're not old enough to know what they're doing. I'm just saying that. You know, in charge of that much money going in and without the regulation behind it, I was just surprised so many people trusted him. For example, I just got a call where I get calls all the time from investments that I'm going to get into, right? That if I want, and, uh, you know, our lawyer is great. Uh, he gives me a lot of ideas. He's in the hedge fund community. And, and, you know, I might pass some of those ideas on to, to, you know, Curzio One members and stuff. Uh, and one of the deals that he wanted me to get into, uh, was a software company that's like an add on. I won't say too much about it, but it's, it's, you know, really good. They got a share a percentage of profits at the beginning and already it's starting to make money. It's a great software uh, that's an add on to a much bigger program. Uh, but when I got on the phone with them, it was, uh, they're engaged, the couple. And as I'm talking to them, one saw who is the owners of these, the owners of this, of this company that oh, okay. I'm thinking of investing in. Gotcha, and gotcha. so I'm doing a zoom call with them and they're both, you know, and talking, and they're in separate places. And he's talking, talking, talking. She just turns around. She said, all right, let me finish. Right away, I'm out of there. <laughs> right away, In two seconds, I'm out of there. Come because on, I'm just saying there's certain love. things that you see. Like if I see, you know, a bunch of young, I make sure, even what we, we're doing with, with, with some of our companies, I'm making sure I'm more involved. Where a company named me the president, president right? So, yeah, I want to see the numbers. I have to be more involved. Uh, you know, and I feel like everybody who jumped into this company weren't involved. My point is, when I looked at that company, I saw those two just bicker a little bit. I'm playing the odds. It might be terrible, but this is my money and my subscribers getting into it. I've never seen a company work out with a husband and wife at the helm. Oh. Not to mention that they're engaged, right? So the fact that, not that they were bickering and 60% of marriages end up in divorce, but what's going to happen if they're both in charge of that company? That makes it really difficult. So there's little things that I see and, and nobody would, you know, the company was great. Everything was great. And, and, you know, the people who gave it to me were like, I'm surprised you're not investing. I said, this is why I said, I'm not going to invest in it because I just feel like, you know, I'm going to play the odds here. And I didn't like that. Again, it wasn't that they were bickering, but she was like, Oh, well, let me finish. And so yeah, I just don't want to deal with that. <laughs> with a company like this. My point is, you know, 
these young people, I'm surprised that you know, they went into the political circles and I get it, but you know, you have to be able to hire people who are much smarter than you and, and lean on people who are much smarter than you that understand this process. And I think instead of everyone you know, being, being able to lean on these people, these people just invested with, with them without even looking at what's going on underneath the hood. And now, you know, look what happened. But, you know, well, a lot of them didn't. I mean, like Kevin O'Leary tried to play that card. You're not writing a check to them. You're just saying, "Yeah, I'll take money from you in an investment form and all that kind of stuff." O'Leary, I'm not taking yeah. again. I'm not taking away from a lot of the people that did lose money. I'm just simply saying, to your point, a lot of those people that claim to do due diligence don't have a. They don't have any uh, O'Leary, reason. Make sense for them to do they don't have. Re- yeah, it doesn't make sense. Frank, if you're if you're going to bring me on to Curzio Research, yep. you're right. Pay me. Yeah. What. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Hey, why why do I care what you do? Absolutely. You know, the, and you just totally wired separate. me. You just wired me a couple million bucks to pay my taxes, and then now I have this account that shows me these tokens. Okay, we're good. Yeah, Frank does what he does. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's have some fun here. So they roll Ellison. Yes. Ellis is that right? Ellison and Wang. Yeah. So do they go to jail? And over under of seven years, Frank. What do they get? Because they got to do a limit. In my opinion, well, I mean, they you let give me Sam and the bull out after he killed like what thirty people, and they that's different, Frank. We have respect for mafia people. These guys are fraudsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying the deals that they sign. It, it depends how much the the FBI has uh, and the SEC has on them. If they really need a couple of dots that could be connected that they can't connect, then they're going to give them even more, and they're, they're going to know that these kids believe in it. They're going to know. Okay, like, I'll take under I seven years smoking, for smoking. the two that turned, and Sam better get fifty plus. What do you think about those odds? I think they. I think it's going to be more than seven. I mean, they might get out before seven, but I okay. think the headline okay, gotcha. has to be bigger than that. I yeah. think it's going to be, well, 20 years and on good behavior, get out in like four. You know, that's how it is. Like, who doesn't behave good when you're in a jail cell and you only get out like, yeah, what are you going to do? Especially these kids. What are they going to do? They're going to fight with someone in jail? They're going to be probably going to, you know, again, they're not going to maximum security and craziness. They're going to go there where they're going to have TVs and stuff like that. And it's nice. And they barely have a fence around where they are. Trust me, I've been to. I've, you know, I've had a lot of friends growing up in Queens, and, and there's a big difference between federal prison and regular. I thought you were going to say, "Trust me, I did ten years." No, so, no, 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 no. Just uh, I, you know, it's just, but there's a huge difference with the max of security where you know visiting friends there compared to you know going to, to federal, and there's seriously not even barbed wire in the fence because you know no one's gonna really gonna run because uh, it's like a, a country club there, but. She's by far the smartest of them out of the trio that I can see because it's reported when she was in New York City a couple of weeks ago that she lawyered up with a uh, Clinton super lawyer, as they call him, mm-hmm. uh, Jamie Gorlick of Wilmer Harrell. And check this out, Frank. Um, let's see. Was the former number two ranker member in the Clinton Justice Department and recent interview shared she referred the lawyer to current A.G. Merrick Garland as her wingman. So there's, you know, they're all, there's no coincidences and a lot of ties in Washington. This will be fun to watch out. Fun meaning uh, hopefully justice is served to these fraudsters. The wild thing, Frank, and the frustrating thing, like I of, often talk about in investing, is that you have to wait. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Sam got back to the U.S. Uh, yesterday, I believe, sometime. Mm-hmm. The trial is not going to be until... 2024, yeah. the end of 2023. Maybe, yeah. I, I mean, it's going to take forever, which is very disappointment. But I mean, at least they're in custody. You got to take small wins. Too. There's still a lot, a lot of stuff they got to go through that, that's hidden that they don't know about. That, that's the thing. It's when you're coming in, you're just looking at papers and things like that. And obviously, since a lot of the, the houses and everything and the assets they weren't accounted for, yeah. I mean, you need people inside to connect the dots. So the more right. you can connect those dots and they're going to know, and the lawyers for Wang and Ellison are going to know that. And if they're like, listen, you know, this is the smoking gun that you wanted. I'm going to hand it to you on a platter if you give us this, this, and this. And, and you know, again, that's how they're leveraging it, and that, that, that's fine.